Hello and welcome to more nerdy rodent geekery. Yes, the model we've all been waiting for is finally here. Stable Diffusion XL 1.0. It's all of a few hours old, so this is hot off the press and works beautifully in the very latest automatic 1111 Stable Diffusion web user interface, which is currently at version 1.5.0. What do we get with this model? Well, as the name suggests, this is now extra large. 1024 by 1024, in fact, so twice the resolution of that Stable Diffusion 1.5 release. If we have a look at this model card here, we can see it also comes with a refiner and a LoRa model as well. SDXL consists of a mixture of experts pipeline for latent diffusion, in the first step so there we've got this base model and we've also got an optional refiner as well that we can use in image to image and there they've got a little chart that shows the uh, user preference for sdxl with and without the refiner over sdxl 0.9 so there we've got 1.0 base 0.9 look look it's better it's better. And with the refiner, yes, it's better. So there you go. SDXL, it's better than all the other ones. Yes, the chart says so, so I believe it. Okay, so this is brilliant. I, I want it. How do I get this working in my automatic 1111 web user interface? Well, it's dead easy. Go over to the files and versions here. Of course, links are down in the description. And there you've got the base, safe tensors, and the offset LoRa. So you can download that, just click on download file, and you want to put that into your model's stable diffusion directory. There it's got the text, put stable diffusion checkpoints here, and that's where you want to put it. So there you can see I've got both the refiner and the base model as well. For the LoRa's, we just go up one, and there in the LoRa's directory, I also have the SDXL offset LoRa. Okay, so now you've got those downloaded, you can hit the little refresh button, and in the Stable Diffusion Checkpoint Selector, you should now be able to select Stable Diffusion XL Base 1.0. Now, you may find that some of your previously installed extensions do cause an issue with SDXL, and in that case, I would suggest disabling them until you find the ones that cause problems for you. So I'm running here without any extensions, just to make sure I don't get any issues, and also the fastest possible rendering. For reference, I launched my web interface with just the Xformers option, and there's all the options here on the Automatic 11.11 Wiki, Command Line, Arguments, and Settings. If we go down here, it's got a load of them, and one of the ones you may want with a very low-end graphics card is Med VRAM, along with no half VAE. Obviously, you'll be used to using those already if you do have an entry-level card. All right, so we've got the model now, and we are ready to rock and roll. So just select your sampler of choice. I'm using Euler A there. Now, you'll have to bump the resolution up a little bit there. So I've got a width and height of both 1024 by 1024. If you leave that at 512 by 512, then do expect to get a rather messy output. With a batch size of 1 and a batch count of 1, that used about 8 gig of VRAM for me, obviously, I've got a whole lot of recording equipment going on here as well, also using VRAM. I noticed with the med VRAM and no half VAE options, it was around six gig, but well, your mileage may vary. Right, so with the requirements covered, it's time to take a look at prompting. Now, the first thing I noticed was prompting seemed to follow what I asked for a little bit better. Don't know, could be just my imagination, but let's check out some of these examples and see if you agree with me. Now, styles were the first thing that I tested. So here I'm going to generate a pixel art style rodent detective. There he is. Let's have a click on that, make it a bit bigger. I think that turned out quite well. That's not bad for a pixel art style. All right, let's have another style. Let's go for a 3D render of a rodent detective instead. And once again, that has come out quite well. That's a, a fairly nice 3D render of a rodent detective. OK, how about if I go for a rodent sculpture made of glass? Can it do that? Well, we'll find out in just a second. And yes, it can. There is a very fine glass sculpture of a rodent. I quite like the reflections through there. That's quite nice. 
Playing again with materials, let's try exactly the same thing, but this time we want our sculpture to be made of chrome. And there we go, look at that. That is a rather fantastic chrome rodent. Can it handle watercolors? Now watercolors in the previous stable diffusion models I don't think looked very good, but how does SDXL come out with my watercolor rodent astronaut? That's not too bad. You've got the definite watercolor art style there. Okay, I like it, I like it. How about sketches? Let's have a look at a sketch of a cyberpunk rodent wearing a cool jacket. All oh, right, yeah, that's that's not a bad sketch. He's got a cool jacket. He's a bit cyberpunk. You can tell by the glasses. And just one more for this little bit here, a realistic photo of a humanoid rodent druid. Can it make it realistic? Well, let's have a look. There you go. He seems to be holding some sort of nut. And yeah, that's not too bad. It's, I guess it's fairly realistic as far as rodent druids go. And in true nerd style, of course, I made some earlier. So let's have a look at these styles. They are, of course, listed up there at the top. So there we've got a traditional woodblock style, postmodern art style. That's just a painting inspired by Joseph Turner. It's not too bad. There's a, that's meant to be impressionist art style cyborg rodent, but yeah, not. I don't think that's really impressionism. There's a graphic novel art style. Uh, futurism, it, it, it's not too bad. It looks a bit more like Cubo futurism, but never mind. There's a folk art rodent for you. Forvism. Cubist art style wrote a little bit better. Cartoon, I do quite like the cartoon art style. Art Nouveau, which used to be quite popular in Stable Diffusion 1.5. And Anime Rodent, he's got a rather trendy hat on. Do quite like that. Academic art style, that's meant to be, which is, I, I guess it's close. And their abstract expressionism. Okay, so it can definitely do a load of styles, some better than others. Now, of course, obviously the one thing we all need to know, thanks to these various technological advances, can we now generate perfect human hands? And the answer is yes, of course we can. Here, a realistic photo of a human hand. And what do we get? We get an absolutely perfect hand. I did a load of tests with the different samplers and guidance scales as well. There we've got the guidance scale 5 going up to 12.5. As usual, the higher your guidance scale goes, the more baked, that's the word I like to use to describe the look of it, it gets. So generally speaking, sort of 7.5 to 10 seems to be okay before it starts getting baked or overcooked. Another thing I like to test these things on is, does it have problems understanding positioning and all that color bleed? You know, remember when you could ask for a blue bear in a red forest and it wouldn't quite get it? Well, let's see how well SDXL does. So here I'm asking for one of my favorite tests, a fish riding a bicycle. And I think that's done really rather well. All right, let's 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 put that on random and we'll, we'll crunch up that batch size just so we can get a few more examples. All right, yes, those are actually all very, very good. Those are, there's a fish, that's, there's a fish riding a bicycle. Brilliant, it's got it right. I, I'm okay with that, I'm pleased with that. All right, let's, let's, let's take it up a notch, shall we? Let's make it really, really difficult. So now we've got a red box on top of a blue box. How will it cope? And the answer is not very well at all. We've, we've got lots of red boxes and blue boxes and not really any boxes on top of each other there. We've got a little tiny box on. Yeah, no, I don't think it understands, uh, you know, red box on top of a blue box. So let's make it even more difficult. A red box on top of a blue bench and we want it photo style at midnight. So we've given it, you know, two chances. So I'm saying box is on the bench really i want that box on the bench i want it to be a photo and midnight as well because obviously previous models have had a little bit of an issue with darkness sometimes and there it's it's not too bad we do actually have one image that's okay that's a red box on top of a blue bench it's done it but all of the others are just mixes of red and blue benches and things but midnight it's done very well as well so that's come out quite nicely Okay, let's give it one more complex test. So here I want a huge green man standing next to a tiny blue alien and I'd like it photo realistic. And once again, it's it's interesting. So we want huge green man, tiny blue alien 
and we've got well that's that's interesting that's interesting and uh yeah i mean it's close it's close but no no banana there all righty so let's move on to the next thing which is that laura offset so here i've got exactly the same prompt there we've got the huge green man standing next to the tiny blue alien but this time i've put the laura offset in it as well you can click that little icon there to show and hide your lauras and then click on laura as you can see there i haven't got a preview on it because well i'm not actually sure entirely what this laura does if we take a look at the images there, it's it's pretty hard to tell how it's changed. I mean, some of them seem a little bit darker. They're, they're definitely different, but as to as to what I should be doing, this Laura, not entirely sure. So if anyone has any ideas, do let me know down in those comments. OK, so the next thing is that refiner. So this at the moment you might think perhaps you could use it in high-res fix, but no, there doesn't seem to be a way to do that as yet. Maybe something will turn up uh, later in Automatic 11.11. But for now, what I do is just send that over to image to image. And then in image to image, I select the SDXL refiner model in there. Pick the denoising strength you want here. I'm going to go down to ooh, around 0.44. That will do. And now when I click generate, it's going to give me that image, but with a whole load of extra detail. There it is. We click on that. We'll zoom out. There we go. That's that's quite nice. You've got a little alien there. You've got the man and lots of extra detail on that large head. As for that denoising strength, you certainly don't want to go above 0.7. Let's just have a look here. So that's denoising 0.2. These are all examples. So you can take that as being very close to the original image. 0.4 there, we've got a little bit more detail. As we go up to 0.6, the sort of shape of the face is changing. 0.7, the, the very definite maximum, I think, there. 0.8, the face is completely weird. 0.9, it's stretching. And by denoising one, we've got multiple noses. So yes, not a very high denoising strength on that refiner would be my suggestion. So there you go. Nice and easy to install and use, and you get loads of really interesting outputs. I know I'm going to carry on prompting to see what I can create. Do let me know if you've discovered any cool prompts down in those video comments. Of course, just before you watch this next Nerdy Rodent video.